Welcome to this lesson on installing WordPress locally. Now some of you might be asking, well, why should I install WordPress on my own machine? Several reasons pop to mind. First, setting up WordPress locally allows you to test the WordPress framework and various themes without committing financially to an ISP or domain name. Second, testing locally keeps your mistakes away from the public eye that you're trying to win over. Lastly, installing locally allows you to test faster since you don't have to wait for uploading files after each revision. So, installing WordPress locally has won you over, but what now? Well, you need to install software to make all this work. Anyway, we'll need to install the WordPress framework. Additionally, we'll need to install a web server, a database, a PHP processor, and programs that allow us to customize our databases and PHP options if we need to. I know what you're saying, wait a minute. I don't know how to do all this, and besides, if I go live, my ISP can do all this with one click. And you're right. Installing all this stuff one at a time is the very reason why I procrastinated for years in jumping into WordPress blogs. Luckily, I joined the DIYThemes.com community and found out that one piece of software does all this at one time. That program is called WAMP Server, or WAMP for short. What exactly is WAMP? Well, to mimic live WordPress blogs, we need all the programs that they use. We need the Apache web server to properly handle our blog operations. We need MySQL to handle our blog's database interactions. We need a PHP processor to handle the PHP commands our blogs contain. And we need SQLite Manager and PHP MyAdmin if we choose to customize database and coding options. Luckily for us, WAMP does all this for us. And although there are other bundled programs like this, I'll cover WAMP since it's easy to install and the first program I tried. So without further delay, let's download WAMP Server. In your browser, go to www.wampserver.com forward slash en forward slash download.php. Scroll down and click on the Download WAMP Server 2.0 link. Click on the Save File button Save to your desktop for simplicity. Click on save and wait for the download to finish. Congrats, you've downloaded WAMP and completed the first step. Now let's install WAMP. Go to your desktop and double click on the WAMP server icon. Click on run in this dialog box. WAMP doesn't like being installed over previous installs, so this dialog box warns us to clean up any previous installs. Just click yes here and click Next here. Click the radio button next to Accept the Agreement and click Next. By default, WAMP installs to C colon backslash WAMP. Leave this as is and click on Next. Now click the boxes to create a quick launch icon and desktop icon and click Next. Now click on Install and wait. You should get a browser detection notice asking you if the browser you're using should be used with WAMP. Just click yes. Now come the PHP mail parameters. In the SMTP field, leave localhost in there. And in the email field, you can put your email if you like, but I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Click next to continue. Make sure the checkbox is there to launch WAMP Server 2 now and click finish. On your system tray, you should see a new WAMP Server icon. If you click on it once, you will see all the options available to you. Just a word of caution, if you use Skype, you need to turn off Skype before you launch WAMP Server or you'll get an error message. In layman's terms, Skype and WAMP Server use the same stuff on your computer and will conflict. I also turned off my webcam to be safe, even though I don't know if that's even necessary. Also, if you have an IIS server, make sure it's turned off. Most of you won't have to worry about this since most machines don't have that installed and running by default. Anyway. Congratulations, you've completed the second step. Now let's create a new database for WordPress. The database we're going to create will handle all the info that our WordPress installation files need. Click on the WAMP server icon on your system tray. Move up to My PHP Admin and click. Hopefully you're one of the lucky ones whose browsers open up to the PHP Admin screen and continue on. But if you're like me, you'll get an error message. It took me a long time to figure out what was going on, but finally I realized that my firewall was stopping me from seeing my PHP admin page. To fix this, I double clicked on my firewall icon, clicked on the program control tab, 
scroll down to locate the Apache HTTP server and made sure there was a check mark under Access Internet for this program. When I repeat the previous steps, my browser loads up the proper MyPHP admin page. Now, under the Create New Database field, I enter the word WordPress, then click on the Create button. Congratulations, the third step is complete. Now we can go and download the latest version of WordPress. To download WordPress, go to wordpress.org forward slash download. Over on the right side is the download zip file for WordPress version 2.61. Click on it. Make sure save file is highlighted and click on OK. Download to the desktop again. Click on save and wait for the download to complete. Alright, step 4 is complete. Next, let's extract our zip files. To extract our zip files from their zipped up box, we'll right click on the icon and choose extract here. The extraction happens pretty quick and we see our new WordPress folder. If we open the folder, we can see all of our files and subdirectories that we need to have a working blog. Okay, this completes the fifth step. Now we need to change one of the files that we just unzipped called wp-config-sample.php so that our database works properly. To change our wp-config-sample.php file, we need to use a text editor. You can use Notepad if you like, but I'm going to use a program called Dreamweaver. Regardless of which program is used, we open that program and open our file into it. All we have to do here is change three values that relate to our database. First, change the value of db underscore name to the name we used when we created our database. In our case, we created one called WordPress, so we'll type that in here. Second, change the value of db underscore user to root. When we use WAMP, it assigns us this username by default. Third, change the value of DB password to nothing. Just erase what's in there and leave it blank. Lastly, save this file under the new name of wp-config.php. Okay, step six is done. Now let's put all of our files where they need to be in order to run properly. To transfer all of our files to the root directory, we need to know where the root directory is. When we install WAMP, it goes to the C colon backslash WAMP directory. Inside the WAMP folder is a www folder. This is considered the root directory that mimics what we would have on a live server on the internet. All we need to do is open this directory and dump all of our files into it. Let's do that now. On our desktop, open up our C colon backslash WAMP backslash www folder. For some reason, there is an index file already in this directory. I don't think we need it for anything, but just to be safe, I renamed it to index.wamp.php because one of the files we are going to copy into here is called index.php already. Anyway, let's open up our WordPress folder and make sure we can see both folders on our screen. In the WordPress folder, I'll click on Edit, then select All. Then I'll right-click and drag these files into the www folder and choose Copy Here. The files transfer and we are done with step 7. Now all we have to do is install the WordPress platform and we will have WordPress installed and ready to go on our own computers. To install WordPress, open our browsers and type localhost forward slash wp-admin forward slash install.php. For the blog title field, just enter any name. I'll type Shane. For the your email field, you must enter an email here. I'm going to uncheck the option to allow my blog to appear in search engines since I'm testing locally. Then I'll click on install WordPress. After WordPress installed, you will see a success screen where your username is admin and your password is a hard to remember computer generated password. I suggest definitely printing this page out so you don't forget the next time you try to log in. I'll just copy this password, click on the login button, paste this password into the password field and click on login again. Awesome, you're now looking at the admin dashboard of your new local blog. You can click on the view site link to see what your blog would actually look like and then mess around with all the options that the dashboard offers. Congratulations, you now have a fully functional local WordPress blog that you can tinker around with.